What up, YouTube? It's your boy, Banks. And we back in the building, you feel me? It's True Talks. Because True Talks, all right? Let's get straight right into it. So you already know, obviously, you know, um, it's been happening over the weekend and over, you know, I obviously did a breakdown on um, the Raptors versus Kings. And funny enough, ironic enough, that even though it was a breakdown on the Raptors versus Kings, you know, there was talks behind the scenes that um, Pascal Siakam, the, the Raptors, are obviously interested, vice versa, as well as the Sacramento Kings are interested in doing a trade, a potential trade. We didn't know what the trade was going to be. Then all of a sudden you hear that Sacramento Kings pull out of the trade. And, and now you hear later that, oh, the trade was Raptors and, you know, Pascal Siakam revolving around Harrison Barnes and then the, the Raptors pulled out of the trade. And then you obviously hear that the the Golden State Warriors put out of the trade with, with Kaminga. And then you hear that, you know what I mean? Just bare people pulling out of trades that were once interested and now not. And what is the common theme? I try to tell y'all, Siakam is not like that. This is where the gray area sometimes exists, that... What Siakam is with a team, all NBA, being number one option, being the franchise player. Sometimes that's not that just because you are that on paper and you actually are that. That's what you are for that team. That's not what you are regardless wherever you go. And what happens is most times, most times. The franchise player, the all NBA guy, all the accolades that come aligned with Siakam, his points per game, all those things naturally normally correlate with a franchise player wherever he goes like the kd like you know that he's gonna demand michael bridges and cam johnson and picks and whatever the case is like the paul george is gonna demand the shade like wherever you go most of the times a man of that caliber for that team he's going to be traded for xyz like he's, there's a certain amount that he's guaranteed gonna be traded for look at dame lillard etc but pascal is not that and that's what happens. There's sometimes a gray area that just because you're a franchise player does not mean you're a real franchise player. Just because you were an all-star that one year does not mean you're viewed as an actual all-star every day, every night from the rest of the league. And that's what y'all fans have to understand, especially Raptors fans. We tend to overboost every man that the Raptors have way higher than what they actually are, which is exactly what the Raptors are doing. Thinking quickly is actually maxi. No, he is not. I'm not saying quickly isn't nice and he shouldn't thrive, but he's far from levels from Maxi. That's even disrespectful to even entertain that conversation and even put that out there. You're putting pressure on IQ for. For what? There's zero one-on-one -on -one game that um, Emmanuel quickly has. He only gets it off of a closeout, rip through, blow by, gets his floater, or the screen now he's going to blow by pocket pass or get the floater one-on-one. -on -one, he's not, he's not just <laughs> into the step back. He'll do it when he's feeling hot, but then most of the times he even misses those. Maxi has real one-on-one -on -one ability. They have similar speed, similar body type, even though Maxi is bigger, but the shot creation, Maxi has real shot creation ability. You can't average 25 without real shot creation ability. We're talking about from how he scores. You know what I'm saying? So you got to understand that. Like, before we even get into why and what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to break things down. Let me, before we even go that further, because, dog, I have, we have to have a real conversation. Because like, Raptors fans, you have to have a real conversation sometimes. And it looks like I'm a hater. And I'm just a truth teller. That's what I'm about. The game first, everything else second. I don't care about no bias. No, you love this man. It's about the game first. Look who's on the wall, fam. It's mama mentality first, everything else second. That's what we care about. And when I speak, if you really are him as the player or whoever the case is, your soul should be touched and you should get better. Hence, when I speak about RJ, about dog, you should be mad that man is talking about quickly in, in your own hometown off the trade. They're not even talking about you. Why is that? Turn up. Go get a bucket. Stop this passive shit. What are you doing, fam? And then look, he gets almost 40. 
Because at the end of the day, when true talks, you listen, fam. Even if you didn't hear that shit, that's what's available. That's how people, his, or anyone around your team should be talking to you like that. If you really like have cerebrals around you. That's what I'm talking about. I speak how they speak. The behind the scenes, the guys that are motivating that man. I speak how they speak. You feel what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. So sometimes I get misunderstood because I have this battle. I have this battle where I'm trying to under, I'm trying to help a team get better or give them a vision that, you know what I mean? Because it's a vision that I speak to. I have vision, right? I have vision at the end of the day. I have real vision. You know what I'm saying? What that means is my mind. In my mind, right? I have a real hoop mind. I have a hoop mind that can actually counter whatever. I even have more of a hoop mind than some of these GMs. Let's keep it a buck. Like, I really hoop. Man's really hoop. You know what I'm saying? Some of these guys that are making the decision, just because you're making the decision, you're still a human at the end of the day. What do you know? Do you really understand that that guy can really get a bucket and she be getting the money? Do you really understand that that guy is limited? Even if you pay him the bread, he's only going to be a max here. He's not a number one guy. You're putting him in a bad position and setting up your team for failure. Do you, you know what I mean? Do we understand these things? Just because you're making the decisions does not mean you have real high basketball hoop IQ. If you talk about business part of it, that's a different conversation. We're just talking about the X's and O's, knowing who's who, knowing who has ability, who's going to do what, foreseeing things. That's part of it, foreseeing. Okay, this guy here, we don't know what we see, and that's what happens with a lot of the fans sometimes. Perfect example is the OG situation. People only see OG as what they see him because all they see him as that, and that's what he's been. But there was flashes. For there to be flashes on a consistent basis, what is happening during that flash? Oh, there's a one stretch where Pascal was out to start Scotty's rookie season, 2021 season. 2021-22, I'm pretty sure. Because 22-23, yeah. 2021-20, let me make sure because I want y'all to really understand what I'm talking about. Because sometimes, you know what I mean, man's bands don't understand and it's hard for them to understand what I'm saying because, you know, at the end of the day, I'm somebody that speaks from a different perspective than most. So let me just go. Let me just see. Give me one second, yo. When was Scotty's rookie season? Because it's getting out of hand. 20, yeah, 2021, 2022 was his rookie season. That season I'm talking about. Yeah, because it's, yeah, Scotty's third year. 2021, 2022, okay? That season, Scotty's rookie year, that's when the Raptors started off the actual season. I'm talking about context now because that preseason, you saw what OG was really doing versus Celtics, and he was actually shot creating OD. People talk about, oh, he doesn't have a good ball hand. I'm like, I don't know what y'all are watching or what y'all forget. Or Sometimes you get a small sample size that's not really, really small because nine games isn't OD small. It's not like two games, three games. It's a literally consistency in that. It's still small to the grand scheme of 82 games, but for what I'm talking about, it's not small. That context that year, Scotty was coming in, so it was a whole new situation. OG can now focus on, okay, they said, yo, we don't have no bucket getter right now. Pascal is injured. We need you to get buckets. They ran plays for him. They put him in scenarios that his usage was guaranteed high, which is why in that nine-game stretch, he averaged 18 points per game. When that was the offseason where he's like, okay, I'm working on my game, and you could see it in preseason. He was really developing. He was showing, okay, I'm not just a 3 nigga, I'm a two-way. That is what I'm talking about. That's small sample size. After that nine games when Pascal comes and now you're going back to your shell and they want you to go back to 3 and D, now you're a whole different player again. Now when he gets injured later down the season and now they try to tell you to go up again, now it's like, nigga, what do you, like, it's going to be confusion and the rhythm is off. There's, you're playing with someone. So you can't look at that injury with Pascal. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when man's just fresh coming into the season. You know, I'm about to cook this season. I worked on my game. Let's see what we're doing. That nine games, Scotty averaged 22 points per game. I'm even put the shit on the screen so y'all really see that I'm not capping. 22 points per game. What was it? 18 shot attempts. 18, 19 shot attempts per game, fam. When you know what OG be doing, you don't really shoot. You know what I mean? Like, he doesn't really do that at all. At all. Let's see what he really does. On an average. Because man's just be chatting. Man's, you can't, it's like man's can't understand what I'm saying because I have foresight. 
I see when I see flashes and see, oh, so this is what he really is. When I see a flash of something, it's not by accident. Flashes aren't by accident. Flashes aren't, oh, just because he was feeling. Flashes show you who someone really is, and then you go, okay, so why are they not doing that often? What's going on here? That's how, real IQ. That's how people, they be scouting. They, that's why they'll take someone who literally will show a flash and be like, yo, trade for that guy. I promise you when he's over here, what we will really make him be. That's p- called foresight. That's what y'all don't understand. Y'all just see what you see on a, oh, the sample side. If you played 80 games with the Raptors, if 70 out of those 80 games, he literally was a 3 and D guy, he's a 3 and D guy. That's how n- normal fans see the game. And that's where sometimes I misunderstood. Y'all think you understand what I'm saying, but y'all really don't understand what I'm saying based on your response, based on your talk, based on what I'm really saying, which is why some guys will be in the comments. I'll be like, thank you. You really, you really get it. So let me continue because some of y'all still to this day don't understand what I was saying with the OG thing. This is why I never said it won't be a win-win. I'm talking about the potential for the Raptors. It is a mistake when you have this guy. Think of it like Monopoly. Oh, I'll give up Park Place. Let's say you have you have Park Place. You give up Park Place and you want to get the, the, the greens and the reds or the, and you can now get a whole set, but you give up that Park Place. That potential of that Park Place. In real time, oh, no one has the other set. It's light work. It doesn't matter. But in potential, wait a couple more rounds. Wait, be patient. Now, whatever a man had with that park place set is way more quality than what you have. And now he's going to wax you and get you out the game. That's what I'm talking about. It's the potential. Sometimes men can't see until they have the set. And I could see once you have one, I could see from when the board, when, from when the, 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 the thing is on the game. No one even got the card. I could just see and envision. That's called foresight. That's how I operate, which is why all the time when Banks speaks, years later, yo, Banks said this from, ye- yeah, Nick, I said this from long time ago that the Pascal trade, literally, y'all should have traded him because I know how his value really is. I know. It's, it's hoop. Mans don't rate him like that. Let's be honest. And it's not that he's not nice. You see when I show the game, he's just, un- just I'm just going to keep it a buck. How real hoopers view Pascal, they view him as a guy that's overachieving. Meaning he has lack of skill, right? Not just has lack of skill. He's not a smart player. What that means by that is he doesn't have natural high IQ things. Like, perfect example, if Pascal was a role player, he would probably be out the league soon. He has to be a star or a, or a superstar or all-star or whatever. He has to be that because of the way he plays. He's not a guy that can just live in this NBA, not getting no touches, being a role player like a Grant Williams, just playing defense, solid defense, making up for other man's mistakes, being at the right place, the right time, all the intangibles. Pascal can't operate like that and just be that forever because he doesn't have that. That's what I'm saying, which is why you'll see in moments when I'm playing, the, when I'm doing breakdown, I don't even try to harp on Pascal. He just does dumb shit all the time. That's what I'm talking about. To the point he's even a detriment a lot of the times. Missing, doing, making turnover, bad mistakes. Da, da, da. Sometimes even open layups he will normally make from minute one to, to 45. Now that it's minute three, for, uh, minute 40, 45, 46, minute 46, minute 47, minute 48. Now it's clutch time. Now the pressure is high. Now that same push shot floater, he's probably going to miss it. Y'all know. Y'all watch. Or that same free throw he normally makes, now he's going to miss it. Y'all watch. I'm not, I'm not, dog, I'm just being honest. Y'all know when your heart is beating, when you're rooting for the Raptors, and the ball, and Pascal has the ball in the clutch, you're not confident. And when he hits it, and hits a tough shot, or hits a step back, or hits some shot, created shot, or something in a clutch, you're like, oh my goodness, yo, okay, Pascal. You're amped. Because you didn't expect him to. That's what I'm talking I'm talking about to your soul as a fan. I'm speaking to you. I know you more than you know yourself, fam. Because in those moments, I know what you really think. Because if you really love the game, you really know that your palms are sweaty when Pascal's your lead guy. You're not confident. You're more confident when Trent has the ball and he shoots it. You're more confident when Scotty has the ball and he shoots it. You're more confident when Shooter has the ball and he shoots it. Let's be keeping, when Van Fleet had the ball, you were hella confident. Even when Lowry had the ball, you were confident. When Kawhi had the ball, you know how you really felt. Pascal gives you that same feeling to when DeRozan had the ball and when Pascal has the ball. Understand what I'm saying to you. There's a reason why. There's levels. So when the other people see this, 
They will never rate Pascal higher because they know that he's overpaid on paper. They know that he has a situation. He can't just go anywhere and be a franchise player. So, no, are your deals now are going to be offered as if you're not a franchise player. We don't care what you really is. That shit don't mean nothing right now at the table in the deal because it only means what we value. He's that. He's a franchise player to y'all, not to us. Hence, Harrison Barnes and some picks. Take that. It seems disrespectful Raptors pull out. They won't even give Kaminga for Pascal if he's really an all-NBA. What are we talking about? Didn't the Suns give Michael Bridges and Cam Johnson their, their Kamingas for KD? Because Pascal is not that. What was proof in that when the Raptors wanted to get KD, when KD was saying, I'm out of Brooklyn, and they were looking, never in the trade did the Brooklyn Nets ever even ask for Pascal? It was Scotty and OG. Why? I told y'all they have the most value on the Raptors. Why is that? Because they have real ability, whether it's defensively or whether it's IQ. Like, it's just, that's what I'm talking about. Raptors fans, you have to have a real conversation with yourselves. Y'all overboost, man's way too much. The same way, yes, Lowry was crucial. Less Lowry, Lowry was this and all that type of stuff. Greatest rapper of all time. Yes, a Raptor of all time. Okay. But y'all now saying he's better than Chris Paul. He's better than Trey Young. He's better than this guy and this guy. Come on now. What are we talking about? I rate him mentally. And that's when I now have to shit on Lowry because of you fans. You put me in that position because it's just a real shit over everything. So I have to be real now and really tell you what really Lowry actually lie, lies instead of me uplifting him and boosting him because I really rate him. I rate his mentality. It should have been him in the clutch. It should have been DeRozan every time. But Lowry steps up no matter what. And he'll fight through. That's what I might do. Overachieve. Same with Jimmy Butler. These men don't have a real, real bag bag. But when it's time, the clutch mentality is so elite that now they have a bag. Where there's men like the Rosen who have a bag, but in the clutch, you look like a basic man. You know your bag leaves you because it's mental. The game is 90% mental. Understand what I'm really speaking to. You heard? I'm on a rant. My fault. But that's what I'm really speaking to. So back to my original point, when I'm talking about with the OG, with the potential, like I'm bring, like I preface it with understanding the Monopoly game. If you really play Monopoly, you really understand how it really gets. It's about the potential. Sometimes mans can't see and you have to make a decision. And you could be right, you could be wrong. It could be a win-win. Right now, it looks like a win-win. I'm not saying that the trade was bad in terms of just, just analyzing it for itself. I know that because the Raptors, I was never saying the Knicks were even going to get of 25 point per game OG. It was missed maybe. I don't know what man's heard. I said what he would be on the Raptors if the I said the Ryder Raptors made a big mistake. They're gonna see down the line. It's gonna be blinded sometimes because I really feel that RJ could be an all-star caliber player. I really feel RJ could replace whatever Pascal has at an actual skilled version. So if how if you get Pascal out the way, I really know what RJ could be. It really would be RJ and Scotty as a one-two punch. And then everybody else fit in how you get it. I really have, I really understand what RJ could really be if he really taps into it. Which is why I was telling him, go get, go get, go get buckets, yo. You know what I mean? So I really, it's not like I, I'm mad at the trade. I'm just mad at what the potential could have been. The direction you could have went as an organization. OG was not supposed to be you guys traded even first. It just happened to go that way because you have, that's the guy that has high, high value and you need to make a decision. That's the only time you're getting offers. You needed to make a decision to just change the Raptors overall. So now you bid at that. When you could have stand your ground and say, okay, if OG's offering is getting this, let me see what is out there. But that just proved that past, not, nothing's really out there for Pascal because you would have definitely done that decision first. And then at least see how OG plays with before you now trade. That would be the actual proper correct way to go. But unfortunately, Pascal doesn't have the actual interest, real interest. That you're going to get value back. You're, at the interest that people have for him is literally that the Raptors are now sacrificing. The other team wins more than you win. And the Raptors, how are you unfortunately in that type of deal when you have an all-NBA guy? And how are you always on the losing end of every deal? Which is why the Raptors haven't made no deal. I don't need to be around to understand that. The tea leaf show. Real hoop shows. Because now, it's, it's, come on, fam. You don't have a park place. You think it's a park place, but it's literally a brown. Let me not disrespect that one. It's like a pink. Like, what are we doing with that, yo? It's crucial, yeah, but, dog, for me to give up my park place? Hell no. No. He's not like that. 
He's not a he's not the other boardwalk. He's not the missing piece to the park place. Let's do it. No. No. Which is why what the OG one was, which is why they did it, because it's a win-win ASAP. Both teams happy. But my potential that I was talking about with OG was that in that nine game stretch, and you see him, I even for I lost my train of thought. But yeah, if you go to OG, OG on a regular is only averaging how many? Nine field goal attempts, 11, 11, 13, 14, 12, 8, 6, 4. His whole career, his max field goal attempts was 14.5. And that's even the year that it was 14.5 was the year that Pascal was injured in the first 19 games. That's why it ended up being 14.5 because the first 19 game, the first nine games, look, that's his highest career average, 17. Why is that? This is a guy that averaged 17 on 14 attempts, 44% from the field. Everything, like, why is that? Because in the first nine games, he was averaging 18 shot attempts when Pascal was out. Averaging 22 points per game. What are we talking about? You're telling me, and that's only nine games of finally getting usage, finally getting that. You're getting used to now fatigue with more shot attempts. Certain things you're learning, which is why his field goal percentage dropped a little bit. Stuff like that. (coughs) So when you look at it from that perspective, that's only nine games. Imagine he did that for a whole season. You don't think he couldn't get to 25 points per game? <clears throat> when he now is familiar with that, that's what I'm talking about. That's why when I said the number 25 points per game, people were like, how was he talking about? Go look in those nine games how his buckets were had. Whole different. That's why people, oh my God, you need ball handles to shot create. No, you don't. You know? Do you think LeBron has the most elite ball handle? I could have a plethora of six, eight, six, nine guys. They don't have Paul George type of on a string ball handle. They have decent ball handling. It's not a knock against him. It's understanding the game. When you're six eight, when you're that bro, if you look at LeBron's dribble package, he's not doing anything crazy. He's just doing generic moves, but and he's just using his body to get to and his size to get where he needs to go. To now, like you could just dribble if you're six eight, just take two dribbles, huh? Step back because you're bigger. Shoot over the top. You don't need to do all this crazy drop ball handling. Which is why in that next highlights that I showed, you see him shot creating, whip ball handling on on RJ Barrett. So that guy, I know, is there. A flash for nine games is not a mistake. That more, people look at it as a mistake. That's where I say y'all are wrong. Y'all, when you see flashes, look at it as, oh, he was just good that nine games. It's not real. Y'all take the, it's stat analytics. Y'all don't really understand the game, and I'm trying to show y'all something. Certain flashes are not, some of those flashes, you guys are correct, where it's just, it's just small sample size. He just was feeling hot. It's not real. It's just, he's just on one. I don't look at flashes like that. When I see flashes for nine games, to me, nine games is long. It's not one or two games, three games is short. When I see nine games, 10 games, 11, and anything plus that, I now have to, as IQ person and as someone who's a Paris, look at how is that flash able to even exist like this for nine games? What's happening? Oh, okay. It's because Pascal's injured. So now you have more usage. I'm seeing you have more touches. You're getting, you're not always getting this. Okay, so if you were to get this, this is how you would look. And this is even a, a, a worse version of it because when you get it all the time, you're only going to get better at it anyways. It's just like getting your reps up. This is your first time getting this, and this is how you're looking and you're performing. This, okay, you are really this. Because most people, if they're not really that, they will struggle in those first nine games. Still average close to the same. It takes them a while to finally break out of it, have a breakout year, whatever the case is. For you to act the right out the way, right out the gate from preseason, Start snapping. Then nine games here. Start snapping. Oh, all right. Well, okay. That's what you're doing. Okay. That's what was happening with OG. So when I saw that, I always know the potential is get rid of Pascal. We will really see who OG. And not only that, Scotty in that time was averaging almost 20. He was snapping, which is why people thought that, oh, my God, how could you ever say we shouldn't pick up Scotty as a trade? Because that started out the season. But then when Pascal came back again, Scotty went to like 14 points per game, 12 points per game, dropped drastically. Which is why I was saying, then I started saying, see, y'all don't be patient. I never knew Pascal was going to be injured to start the season. My take was with Pascal and Scotty there. That's my take. My take isn't when there's not one there. I would never say anything. If we never had a Pascal and we drafted Scotty, oh my God, I will be praising that shit. But I know you're not going to trade Pascal because, again, people don't want him. So you're going to have to write it out. But then that's why last year or the year before, whenever it was last year, when his trade value was high because they switched offense and their switched offense gave Pascal the keys. Van Vliet is there playing off the ball, setting Pascal screens, all that type of shit. His rhythm is off. So you gave the keys to Pascal. 
So individually, he was doing his best ever in life. But I told y'all, with the personnel and the team that the Raptors have, Pascal doing his best, he's never going to actually have the team doing his best. When he's doing his best, doesn't mean the team's going to do his best. The only way that will exist for a guy like Pascal is if he has the perfect team around him, which means shooting bigs at all times, like Giannis in the Bucks, or like Pascal when he had Ibaka and Gasol. So when he would do his best, the team would also do his best. This is real IQ I'm breaking down for you. Because Pascal doing his best is still paint eating, regardless. So if you're canceled at that, you individually having the ball and passing like man's at a rhythm and you're still canceling. You're still canceled at some point. We're with the Raptors team. Pascal will at Pascal not won't be at his best, but him playing off the ball, cutting, backdooring, getting ISOs off mismatches, only very I very specific scenarios, and then transition killer. Like how he played with Kawhi. Just a bit more usage in that. He could average 22, 21, but the Raptors will still be a better version of themselves because other men are creating, Scotty's doing more, etc., which is what you're seeing with the Raptors even right now. Pascal's not every play getting it, getting it, getting it. Quickly is running a point guard. Scotty is running the point guard. Pascal is a more of a balance. And now you see how the Raptors play differently. That's what I was talking to, that it could have always been like that. But anyways, that's why even when Banks is wrong and it looks like he's wrong, he's really right if you just be patient and just really see it. So now at that point in time, and I'm, I'm going way too long. I don't want to make this way too long. But at that point in time, you know what I mean? Like, you have to understand that when that now was happening, I understood. This is where I get lost sometimes in vision. I understand and I look at it from, okay, this is what OG could be if you trade Pascal now at the deadline. When his stock is actually the highest, you will get the most you could ever get for him. You're going to make a mistake. I said this. You're going to make a mistake where if you don't trade him now, when you really want to trade him, man's are going to offer this pinch, and then now you're going to have to take a deal you never wanted to take, or he's going to have to go for nothing, or you're not going to be able to trade him. And that's another part of it, too. Other man's are like, are we really going to give that up for this guy that we don't even really rate that high? And he's in contract year and he can leave anyways? Hell no. So Raptors, if they're going to make a deal for Pascal, like I said, you're going to make a horrendous poo-poo deal that you would have never made two years ago when you look at how Pascal's stock is. His stock naturally drops because now it's not about whatever he's done on paper. Now it's about real shit. When you now are in contract year... And man's know, if I'm going to get this guy, what do I really believe of him now? Forget all the stats. All the accolades are now out the way right now. Because now it's contract year. It's like, you now let's literally look at the property for the actual property. Let's go see the property ourselves and see. Is that really a park place or not? Nah? Before I pull this trigger and they're looking at Pascal's attributes and his actual stuff and what he does, they don't really rate him like that to make this kind of rash decision. For a potential for a man to leave. That's why the Mavs did that for Kyrie, who still could have left that offseason. and went to go play with Katie wherever he was. But they made that decision because Kyrie is literally him at the. Even if we get him for a small sample size, it's enough. We'll show him why you need to stay here. We'll take that opportunity. We'd rather have him here. And just we, we can really talk to him for three months. We have an advantage. Let's, let's do that because he's worth that. Pascal is not worth that in everybody else's eyes. To the Raptors, he is. To everybody else, he's not worth that. And now this is why you run the risk of that. And this is what I was saying before. If you traded him at that time and you kept OG, I know what OG could really be because at the end of the day, the best version of RJ, the best version of OG is still, I would take that more because of the defensive capabilities. And I know how crucial that is. So even though RJ, let's say, could get 40 at any time, and now OG, at his best version, could get 35 at any time because we know RJ still has a better natural skill set than OG, I'd rather take the guy that could get 30 at any time, but his defense is he's shutting niggas down as opposed to a guy that could just, that's just only going to just get me maybe from a range of 35 to 40 at any given night. The offense separation is not that drastic. Where the defense is that drastic. So I'm going to take that one. Because I still have other mans on the team that could get buckets too. And then now I can now go a lane of, yo, just give me a shot creator. 
All I need is a shot creator. He doesn't have to have defense. We have defense. Everything is set. We have good. Let me just get a real bucket getter. And you can find that. You can get a Michael Beasley. You can find that. Bring back Melo. Look at dog. You can get anybody who's really him, who could just get buckets, and you have a defense around him. Now you could be like Curry with the Warriors. I could just get buckets, and I have mans around me that have defense. Now I'm even going to play better defense too. That's the route that I say Raptors could be a contender with what they have. That's the route that I wish the GM, the Maasai, would go. So I'm talking from that perspective. So, yes, I'm going to be like, this is a mistake you trade in OG. I'm not looking at it how y'all look at it. Anytime I speak, I'm speaking from here, not where y'all are at. It might sound condescending. It's just the truth, man. I really do this. Maybe because my language or what I'm saying and I'm talking, you know what I mean? Just, you know, it's just niggas talking. So maybe that gets lost. Maybe I'm not using certain terminology that y'all will want me to use that make it seem that I have high. No, I don't need to do that. I'm a hooper. For real. One day y'all will see. Don't worry, it's coming. Y'all will see. You heard? I'm a real bucket getter. Pro level bucket getter. I just didn't make the league. You heard? Understand that. How could I see this when I'm showing y'all? If it didn't exist, you know, let me not because I'd be humble. But at some point, man, I have to stop playing with the IQ, fam. I do this. I do this. If I say something, you don't understand it. Be patient. Dissect it. Really understand what I'm saying. Take away your emotions. Take away all that shit. Really understand what I'm saying. And some of y'all have come around and start doing that. So you understand. You get it. Some of y'all day ones, y'all get it. Y'all get it. I'm not saying you can't agree with me. I'm not saying I know everything in the world. But this is hoop shit. If you're going to come with a different opinion or a different perspective, break it down thoroughly. Make sure you're, you're actually adding into the context of what I said and now rebuttal it. You know what I mean? Don't in your rebuttal say some shit I already answered in my context. I'm not, I don't hear that shit. Because you just, I already answered that. You're just repeating something I just, you know what I mean? Which is why you'll see me respond with some people and I have different energy where I'm like, oh, I hear you. Honestly, though, let's break it down. Did it, did it. And now we start talking. You could go in the comments. You can see. You know what I mean? But that was my perspective on the Raptors trade because I'm doing two videos in one. That was my perspective in the Raptors trade with the OG. It's not that the Raptors can't win from it. It's not that the Knicks can't win from it. It's just that what the Raptors as an organization would be if they went this direction, now they change directions with that trade. The trade isn't just the trade. It's a directional change, which is what I'm angry towards because you didn't, you could have, what y'all are trying to do, you could have rebuild it while OG's only three years older than RJ. What are we talking about? But we went younger. That's not, is that really going young? And that's the thing. I don't look at this team as a losing team. They're only a losing team because Pascal's there and he's their focal point offensively. If he's removed now, I promise you, it's like, a, it's like think of it like that one year when they made that trade from Rudy Gay. It wasn't that Rudy Gay was a black hole. Those people were saying that. Is that the clash between Rudy Gay and DeRozan, both of them trying to be number ones at the same time and trying to prove that's where the effect happened with the team. It was a clash. So when, unfortunately, Rudy Gay now left and they had Lauer and everybody else, Raptors were actually trying to tank. Before this whole We in the North happened. Remember that. They were trying to tank. And then they just they were just winning. They were just winning. They just won. They went on like a seven-game win streak. They're just winning. And they're like, all right, we're not tanking no more. Let's go. And then you became the top three in the East or whatever it was. And now the whole trajectory of the Raptors changed. That's what I'm saying could happen again. If you kept OG and you traded Pascal, I promise you it could happen again. Even Trent will elevate. Now, now Trent is getting clutch buck. Trent is going to be a whole new guy. Like Malachi would be a whole new guy. Everybody will be a whole new guy. Because the pill is now, now we can just really hoop. That's the effect Pascal has. Pascal is like what LeBron is to Westbrook and all of They can really hoop when he's gone. You see how they were really hooping when LeBron was injured and it was 80 and Austin Reeves and D'Lo. They were really being themselves and look how they was winning. That's what I'm talking about. But anyways, the trade I'm not mad at because, again, we're not going back in the past. I'm just explaining myself because, y'all, sometimes when I say certain things, I find it where if you get it, you get it. And if you don't, you don't. And majority is not going to. 
because I don't speak about trying to make a hot take. It's not a hot take. When your man's are just chatting like it's being a hot take, it's not a hot take. It's not a hot take at all. It's the fact that my IQ sees something and maybe clearly that most just don't see. That even they don't see. How could OG, OG's not the type of person that's going to be aggressive and go to work and show that he's a two-way regardless of the scenario. That's my frustration with OG. He's a guy that needs to be pampered, that needs to be like, yo, we're going to run plays for you, now turn up. And then now that he knows and the coaching staff has told him, now he's going to do it. He's one of those guys. He's not just going to be aggressive regardless, and I'm going for individual this. He's not those the type of guy. He just really wants to win. So he only is going to do what the coach tells him. He's one of those guys. So when now Pascal comes back to the rotation, and you're now, okay, you're back to your 3 and D role, even if they don't say it, they just now, the conversation of, yo, we're going to run, we're going to run this play for you. You're going to get more to rock. Even if they don't even say that, just now that Pascal comes, all of a sudden his play calls, he's, he's in the game. They're not calling OG's number. He's now in a different spot in sets. He's in that, that, that spot up role out of these plays. The play, I used to, my role flipped. I used to be in the, where Pascal is now in the role and other men would be in the spot up role. And I was where Pascal was in the, in the plays now. And they put me in that position. You're going to go here. And the plays was for me. They don't have to tell you the place is for you. Just by your position change in the play, you know that it's for you. So now once Pascal comes back, now every time I'm running these plays, I'm in the corner position. I'm in the corner position. I'm in the, I know what you're trying to do. I'm back to that 3 and D role. They don't need to say nothing. I'm speaking real how real hoop minds think. I'm really talking. So just by that, this is why you're here. I'm getting frustrated with my role. I'm getting frustrated because it's not that they're having conversations as the coach. Sometimes the coach, sometimes they don't want to have that man-up conversation because they know they don't want to even do it, but they're forced to because of politics. And now you're going to have to tell that guy that. And then now you give him that information. Now he could just run up in, he could just run up in here and just add one practice. Pascal, you only get in the rock because they, tell, they, they have to because of politics. Stop that shit, yo. Keep it, like, you want, don't want to give too much information that can now derail. So sometimes the best way as a coach is just to avoid it, not say nothing. Pascal's back. We already know. We all know what time it is. And you avoid the smoke. And, it's, and now the OG is in the position of where you caught, do you have to, do you let the team rock or do you bring it up? And some people are going to look at you that now that you brought it up as, yo, you're an individual menace. All you care is about individual stuff. Da, 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 why are you bringing it up? So you have to now. Gauge it every game, every day, every practice, every time you're with the team, always on your mind. And you can get resentment. You can get frustration. And that's where you guys see, like Dennis Schroeder coming out saying, Dog, I never came to the Raptors to be here, to be doing this off the bat. Like, what are we talking about? I came to the Raptors fresh off of Germany, and I showed man's in Germany, and I was letting y'all know. I don't need to say it. But when I signed with the Raptors, all that shit was going to change. Y'all looking for a point guard? I'm a real point guard. I literally won. I with Germany, I won a medal, fam. Beat all the elite teams. I ran point guard. And in the clutch time, it was me off the ice. And I was creating and I did it all. So when I come to the Raptors, I expect the same energy. Let me be a PG. No, you're not. Obviously, he's gonna get frustrated. Oh my god, people think he's gonna tell him Dennis is more. Dennis is playing in the same role he was playing with LeBron. He's not gonna be the best version of himself. The best version of himself is what you saw with Germany. He's not in that. So, yes, he's going to look like ass sometimes because he's in an off-ball role that he's not – he's trying because he's going to survive. He's going to make it work. But that's not his strength, strength, strength where he's the best version of himself. And y'all can't see that, which is why y'all don't even understand a whole realm of things that's happening. Y'all oblivious to a lot of things and just, you know. Now, look, you didn't think of that decision. You didn't think of trading for quickly is going to make Dennis unhappy. You didn't think these are things that y'all didn't think of. Where mans could all be themselves if you just let go of Pascal, get a one-two shot creator, get some 3 and D guys when you traded them back then. And, even, and then now from there, your team's a whole different team. Now everyone will be themselves. I promise you the morale will be different. I promise you everyone's going to be high-fiving again and be laughing and be up-tempo and have not, there's no frustration. All of that will remove. Sometimes it's one common, it's an addition by subtraction. Sometimes it's like that. And it's unfortunate that it sounds like I'm hating on Pascal when I'm not. It's just his play style and how he plays and how he cancels a lot of different people. That's what that's about. But anyways, it's true talks, it's true talks. Share, like, and subscribe. We out here, there's no doubt here, there's no draw here. You feel me? I appreciate y'all. You already know. Again, we'll see how things transpire. We'll see how things pan out. I don't, you know what I mean? We'll see how it works. But for the most part, dog, this trade... 
y'all really not understand Pascal's real value. You really understand that. And I want y'all to understand that they're going to end up trading him for peanuts on the dollar or for some shit. They, even if it looks good, it's a trade they never wanted to do. They're going to have to try now finesse, finesse. Because now when mans know you have to trade this guy, they even will pull out, they'll even put worse deals now out there. Because they know you have to trade him. So now you're even at a disadvantage. Like the, the timeline is even at a disadvantage against you. Everything's at a, you have no advantage in anything. The value literally is only dictated by whoever is trying to now receive him. And they're really showing you what his value really is, what they really think of him. All that stat shit don't mean nothing. What does the property look like? They don't like their property, yo. He don't look like an actual elite Bugatti. He don't look like that. He's not. He's just a regular car, fam. I'm not paying that for it. No. No. He's a regular car that's just being pushed so much because for that family, this car is an elite car. But in reality, for other elites, they're like, what kind of car is that, yo? That's the car you're driving? Bro, fucking hell. That's what's happening, for real. That's just in a nutshell. All right, yo. It's true talks. It's true talks. You already know. You should like and subscribe. We out here. There's no doubt here. There's no drought here. You feel me? I appreciate y'all. You already know. Tell a friend, because I'm here. Because I'm here. Or tell a friend that I'm here. Because <laughs> I'm here. I forgot my own slogan. You feel me? I appreciate y'all. You already know. Again, come, thank you for coming for that IQ. Because that's what I do. I appreciate y'all. You already know. I can't speak right now. But, you know, it is what it is. Again, click that notification button, y'all. Again, we out here. There's no doubt here. There's no drought here. I appreciate y'all. You already know. And I'm out, man.